Okay then, so another editing video is about to go down. I literally just uploaded the mobile editing tutorial to YouTube and already it's going down very well, which is good to see. Um, so obviously I still haven't shaved. I have actually got changed. I've just put this red hoodie on because I've decided this is going to be my editing hoodie. And yes, we have some caffeine in the form of Red Bull. Today's video is going to be focused on Lightroom presets and more importantly, why I think you should buy other creators Lightroom presets in order to develop your own style of editing. So first things first, what I'm going to do is start a screen recording. And today we are on the laptop, not the mobile. And I'm gonna try and do this all in one take once again. File, new screen recording, and bingo. Okay, so our screen recording is all set up. And as you can see, we are in the Lightroom app. I'm gonna full screen it here. And what I've done is I've picked 18 photos that we're gonna apply presets to and see how the presets work so you can have a better understanding of presets and so that you can understand how buying other creators presets will help you develop your own style. So let's go, first things first, develop. This is a photo I took in Marrakesh last summer. And as you can see, down the left hand side, I have all of my presets under user presets. And you can see that I've recently added presets from Valdez, Jacob, and Sam Calder. Um, I recently bought their bundle and they're the only three packs that I've installed so far. And that's what kind of encouraged me to make this video because even by buying their presets, I started realizing things again that I still didn't know about and that I still didn't know that if you slide this this way and that that way, you're gonna get this certain look. So again, I am learning every time I'm buying someone else's presets. It's like watching someone paint a painting. It's like someone watch, it's like watching a copner carve some wood. You're gonna learn something by watching people, by observing, and that's hopefully how you learn from me too. So. Let's start with this photo here. These aren't, by the way, the best photos by any means, but they're photos that I know can be edited and manipulated to look better. So for this one, I remember building this preset last summer, and this is the Morocco preset. As you can see, if you hover over any of the presets, it'll show a preview on the photo. And what's very important to know is that a preset isn't the final image by any means. If anything, a preset should be used as the starting point. However, for this photo, Morocco, it works very, very well. I mean, this preset was created around a load of images with the same color palette, so that's why it works so well. What we'd do is we'd crop it four by five for Instagram. We'd probably straighten up the lines a little bit more as well. And as you can see, it already looks unbelievable before and after, and that's actually one of my favorite presets. Now, here is the important thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go down the side, down the right-hand side, and have a look through all the sliders and see how they affect the image. So as you can see, we have temperature and tint, and most presets shouldn't affect the temperature or tint. In fact, um, a lot of my earlier presets will affect the temperature tint, and this is the very first thing that you wanna change when you apply a preset. You wanna play with the temperature to make sure that it fits in with the time of day your photo was shot, with the conditions your photo was shot, and that's gonna make a huge difference. So that's the number one thing. And also a preset shouldn't really affect the exposure. Again, if it does, then that's the first thing you need to change because if your photo was underexposed, you're gonna have to maybe increase the exposure and vice versa. So here's where it really, really matters. Look at the tone curve. This is one thing you can learn a lot from buying other people's presets. I've seen people with crazy tone, tone curves. How can I not say it? So let's delete all these, right? I've bought presets before Let's see if we can flatten it. And I've seen tone curves like this. And I mean, I'm like, what the hell? Because whenever I've been watching Lightroom tutorials, I've always been taught to plot an S curve on that graph. And then I've seen a line like this, and I'm so confused. But as you can see, it adds a really nice um, faded effect. And you bring in the lows and the shadows right down, which makes it even more moody, which Again, I really like and actually it really suits this image. So it's just little things like that that you have to watch out for and that you wouldn't maybe necessarily even think about because 
if you've watched a basic Lightroom tutorial on YouTube, you've never been taught to use the curve and to manipulate the curve in that way. And then another thing which plays a massive role is the hue. So for example, I learned how to create that nice aqua desaturated sky by playing around with these. If I wanna create that type of sky, I'm gonna to go to blue, I'm gonna change it to aqua, and then I'm gonna get the blue, I'm gonna desaturate it, and I'm also gonna decrease the luminance, not too much, and the luminance of the aqua, and maybe the saturation of the aqua, and then we're gonna get that crazy kind of aqua desaturated sky that you see in a lot of photos. So again, I've learned that by looking at other people's sliders and seeing how they've done it. So I'm gonna take that back because I think a nice blue sky suits, suits how it should be. And finally, this is what taught me a lot. We're scrolling all the way to the bottom, and I started to see people play with this section here, the calibration section and you will not believe how much this can change your images. It's actually insane. So by buying other people's presets, you're gonna see how they're gonna play with these sliders and create really, really unique looks. And I think for me, it's so worth it. You learn so much by doing this. Again, if you really want that nice teal and orange look, you just pull this all the way along and it's that simple. Like one minute edits. So yeah, there's a hundred different reasons as to why I think you should buy presets. Of course you can use them for fast and simple edits when you're on the go, when you don't have time to spend half an hour editing a photo. But for me, I would use them to develop and to create your own unique style. And if you like the image, once you've finished with it, you can literally go up to this little plus button here and go create preset. And you could go Mara for Marrakesh and click create and that's you done. You're gonna have that preset now, forever. So if I reset this image, like so, I can go to Mara, click it, and then all I have to do is add the crop. And that's literally me done. I've edited the photo to exactly how I like it in probably 15 seconds. So another reason why presets are definitely worth it. Um, so yeah, these are all my presets. I'm gonna quickly flick through all of them and show you how they work. As you can see this one, Big Mike, he doesn't like his photos to be overly edited, whereas I do, so I often use this one, which he thinks looks a bit too over dramatic on his photos. So I have a preset made just for him called Mike Thurston. And as you can see, we reduce the saturation of almost everything apart from the skin tone and we play with the skin tone to make it seem a little bit darker, a little bit more contrasty, so you can see the more, more definition in the muscles, in the abs and all that stuff. So yeah, I really like that Mike Thurston um, preset. It's really, really good. And again, another photo of Mike. We could use any of these, but as you can see, they're just a bit too dramatic for Mike, so I always go with this one. And again, remember it's a starting point. It's not gonna look good instantly, not in every case anyway. So we would want to crop it and then we might want to bring the highlights down and again we might want to change his skin tone a little bit so we go on hue and we click skin tone and we can play with it and make it a nicer color we can click the water here and we can change the hue of the water we can make it blue purple we can make it aqua we can increase the saturation of the water like so but again he likes a kind of more subtle edit so that's not his style at all and the presets work on, this is a GoPro image that I shot in RAW. And again, I'll use my favorite preset, Bossa. And already for me, that is 10 times better. It looks absolutely sick. And all we'd have to do there is throw on a four by five crop. Again, a photo like this, if I just go through all my presets, I actually think I used the Bossa one on this photo because we were in Barcelona at the time. Crop it, make sure we straighten it. All the buildings are straight. And then as you can see, it's a little bit too orange because we're shooting at sunset here. So the oranges and yellows are gonna be a little bit more dramatic. So all we need to do there is go into saturation, click on a skin tone and drag it down to something a little bit more natural. It's really that simple. And again, if we really wanted to, we could play with the exposure and we could play with the white balance to get a bit of a better look. This one, this is another photo that I used for the Morocco preset. So just click Morocco and we'll make a crop. 
Again, I'm just showing you, can, you can literally, say you were editing a wedding or a photo shoot for a brand, you can create a preset for all of the photos and you can literally just slap it on and they all get the same look, they're all edited in the same way and I am actually obsessed with this Morocco preset. I think it makes the colors look quite pastely and that's kind of a Morocco type vibe if you've ever been to Marrakesh. Oh, I think this one's quite a good one, so let's crop it first. Because Big Mike is in some pretty cool pool down there. And as you can see, that one looks so sick. You can really desaturate the water as well with the fashion vibes, but again, I'm gonna go with my favorite. And I think all we really need to do is decrease the saturation in the orange. And I think that is a mad, mad little edit. Literally in seconds. Final photo that we'll do before I let you guys go is this one. Um, again, I created this preset specifically for this photo and I've been using this kind of style ever since. So we will go for urban desaturated. And as you can see, before, after, all we've done is took a little bit of color out and desaturated the whole image. And if we want, we can do even more to it. We can make it a bit more blue, a bit warmer. Warmer looks actually quite nice. And then we can bring the saturation, uh, the exposure down, make it a little bit darker. Can go through here. Can probably play with this S curve, and make it even cooler. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Probably take the yellows out altogether. Take the greens out altogether. Probably even take the blues out. Yeah, we don't even need any blues in there. Pump them oranges up a tiny bit more. And then let's play with these sliders down here. Let's see what we can do. But as you can see, we're just really making the images unique to us as the creator, to us as the photographer. Say we want our whole feed to follow a theme, presets are especially good for that. And I actually love that photo more than anything. And then of course, <coughs> we could start throwing gradial filters on there, like so. Drag the eye more towards me. And then we could throw some super moody green on there. We can even, if we really want to, get rid of that little spot in my mouth. Do you know what I mean? That literally took a minute to edit. And I think it looks absolutely ridiculous. Put a radial filter on me as well. How about that, boys and girls? Let's have a little look. And then, before and after, it's really that simple. And all we've done is use the urban desaturated preset and boom. So yeah, I learned so much from buying other people's presets and it's really how I developed my own style by playing off the sliders, seeing what other people have done and then putting my own little twist on it. I don't think you should directly copy other people's presets because that's kind of cheating and then that's not finding your own style. So I don't recommend that, but I do think it's a very good way to learn how Lightroom works. And if you're interested, there is 50% off all of my presets right now. They're available for mobile and desktop and 14 presets for £25 instead of £50. So if you want to download them, please go and do that. There'll be a link down below where you can go on selfie.com slash louisarmstrong7. And if you need any help downloading them, I have a couple of tutorials that are hidden they're on my YouTube channel, but I have to send you the link. So make sure to send me a message on Instagram or just comment down below if you want the tutorials and I'll link you to them. And that means you can then watch them. And it literally takes 30 seconds to install the presets. And I think this is a whole new learning curve for you guys. So I was like you at the beginning. I was like, hmm. Why would I want to spend money on photo filters? But I think there's a lot more to it than it just being a filter for your photo. So anyway, went way over as always. So I would just like to say thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.